Howdy guys! The Phoenix has risen from the ashes to bring you my thoughts on what we got for Sonic's 25th anniversary event. Other than a Hello Kitty crossover, a clip from Sonic Boom Season 2, and other stuff, let's not waste any more time and get right to the meat of the event, aka the upcoming games and added content to existing games. There's not much I can say about this. It's classic Sonic and Sonic Dash. And that's about it. I was a little surprised when he made his appearance in that trailer a short while back. I don't have the game yet, but seeing Sonic there in the LEGO universe is just hilarious, in a good way. Seeing how he plays, I couldn't help but think that he's a tad slow. But then again, it's a LEGO game. What was I expecting? Genesis-style physics? But I digress. I'm glad they got the animations down to a T. From the foot tapping to the running animations, even the spin attack! I may or may not try this, so we'll see in the future. Now only if they will add a Star Wars set, and my fantasy of a Sonic Star Wars crossover will sort of finally come true! Wait, is my mic still on? Uh... Moving on? This! For years, I have always wondered what an ultimate classic style Sonic game with the absolute best of Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic CD, and, to an extent, Knuckles Chaotix and the Sonic Game Gear games merged together would look like. And now, I finally got my answer. To be blunt, while at the same time echoing what I keep hearing from so many people, in a nutshell, this is what Sonic 4 should have been from the start. But the one thing I've noticed is that the sprites look overhauled and revamped. The sprites are colorful and the animations are extremely fluid and smooth, almost as if they added 5 to 10 frames to every single animation, and I already love it. If you know me too well, you know I'm a sucker for silky smooth and fluid sprite animations. I mean, as Nick and Aqua Magna pointed out, the title screen is just beautiful. I mean, look how expressive he looks, and look how fluid the animation is. On top of that, even the other sprites, including simply looking up, shows he's much more expressive than he ever was. I know it's a minor thing, but a little bit can go a long way. On top of the bright and colorful graphics and the fluid animation, Christian Whitehead, the man behind the Sonic CD port back in 2011, confirmed that the physics are close, if not exact, maybe better, to the Genesis games. I'm glad Sega gave him the job as main lead on this game, considering the awesome work he's done with the ports. He knows how to make a Sonic game feel like a great Sonic game. I have full confidence in him and his team, since they know what they're doing. And on top of that, Sonic isn't the only playable character in this game. Tails and Knuckles return as playable characters. Sadly, there isn't any footage of them being playable, but the news is just as exciting. The Elemental Shields make a return, and they look pretty much the same as they always had, but with improved graphics. Seeing the gameplay footage from others, mainly GameX Plane, continues to bring a smile to my face. The more footage I see, the more I love it. For example, Green Hill makes a return, but with a twist. The level starts out pretty much as the original. But then you see a red spring, and upon jumping on it, oh, there's a whole new level. When I first saw that, I was completely taken by surprise. I expected they took the other levels from the other two acts from Green Hill and inserted it there, but nope, most if not all of that section is original. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? I also love the look and feel of Studiopolis. It's just oozing with originality and fun level gimmicks where you can play around with the physics where it is almost virtually impossible to do in Sonic 4 and, to a small extent, Sonic Generations. Now let's talk about the drop dash for a moment. It was shown in the trailer, and I was told to use it by holding down the jump button while in midair that will give you a boost of speed the second you touch the ground. And to be honest, I actually kind of like it. Think of it as a Spin Dash 2.0 with the classic version of the boost ability. Sure, the spin dash will always be a favorite, but it could come in handy if you want a speed run, or if there's a bad nick in front or behind you and don't have the time to get out of the way. I find it ironic that fans can do a better job at making Sonic games than the professionals at Sega and Sonic Team. What I meant is that fans spent years reverse engineering and understanding how the mechanics work in 2D or 3D Sonic games, well, mostly 2D, and they can fix the problems within the span of a few minutes to a few hours or even a few days, what well, probably takes Sega and Sonic Team a few days to a few weeks or even a few months just to fix or tweak the same issues. But regardless, I'm ecstatic about Sonic Mania. It looks like it is everything I have ever wanted in a classic style Sonic game. 
It'll also be released on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One in Spring 2017. And I'm looking forward to not just seeing more, but also playing it for myself. Now we finally touch this subject. Scheduled for a holiday 2017 release date, it is said to be the next big main title Sonic game, but right now we have very little information on it. There's no title, there's no gameplay footage, there's no indication of what the story is all about. What we have so far, other than the release date, is that we've got a CG trailer that shows a darker tone than what we've been getting lately. New giant egg mechs obliterating what looks like the remains of City Escape, and that classic Sonic makes a return. Addressing the elephant in the room that is classic Sonic, people immediately assumed that this is Sonic Generations 2. However, in the stream, and as Nick and Aqua Magnet also pointed out in his video, Takashi Izuka confirmed that this isn't the case. I also specifically remember Sega saying that Generations would be the last time we would ever see classic Sonic appear in a new Sonic game. I guess they changed their minds after seeing how well received he was by the fans. I also noticed that people were turned off by classic Sonic's appearance in the trailer. I'm glad that Classic Sonic is back, but bias aside, they must have a good reason for Classic Sonic to be there, although I hope they're not bringing him in for fan service or having him there just for the sake of being there. Nevertheless, I'm not as hyped for this as Sonic Mania since I don't know a whole lot about this game. I prefer to stay as neutral as possible until I see what the title is and what the game actually looks like, along with additional information. I still remember how excited I was for when the first teaser for Sonic Generations came out and how I wasn't expecting Classic Sonic to appear out of nowhere just like that, although even that didn't show any gameplay footage. All we can do right now is speculate, but until then, I think it's best to just wait and see what Sega has in store for us. You know the old saying, good things come to those who wait. I mean, Sega is planning to release this on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and... NX? Well, I have no idea what this NX will be like as well. The only way to find out is that we wait until next year. It appears that the anniversary that ends with the number 5 curse is finally lifted. The 5th anniversary was a no-show, save for 3D Blast and Sonic R. The 10th anniversary gave us Sonic Adventure 2, while the 15th anniversary almost killed the franchise with Sonic 06. The 20th anniversary put him back on the spotlight with Sonic Generations. In between then and now, we got Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric, and Shattered Crystal, and those two disasters ruined Sonic's reputation more so than even Sonic 06 did. The only way to find out if this curse is truly lifted is to wait until next year. Until then, it's time for the Phoenix to return to his nest of ashes. See ya!